Hey, and welcome back to another Twin Motion video. And in this video, we're going to look at Merge, the Merge tool, which I honestly can't believe I haven't looked at in a video up to this point, which is kind of crazy. So what is the Merge? Well, it's literally exactly what it means. It is merging multiple Twin Motion files together. So ooh, a lot of potential here. So before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which I hope you do, might be why you're here, hopefully, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out quite a lot. Okay, getting into it now. The merge tool. Well, first of all, where is it? And then what is it? We can see if we pull out the burger menu here, there's the merge. Literally right there, merge. And, you know, we can see our little Venn diagram looking merge symbol there. And it makes total sense because what this merge tool does is it takes one to a motion file and just dumps it into another one. So, you know, what, what could be the advantage of that? Well, the immediate advantage I see is that all of a sudden you are no longer, let's call it constrained to one twin motion project. So if you're synced to one Revit project, for example, you can only have one person working in that twin motion file. That makes total sense. And unfortunately that's still the case. Hopefully not in the near future, but we'll see. Given that, let's say you break out your model in some way. I don't know, however you want. And in this video, we're going to break it out between like the site and the building. So in theory, you can have someone working on the site or any separate model that you've kind of broken away and, and exported separately from your Revit model to the point to where you have multiple twin motion files. And then ultimately the end goal is, of course, you do want one you know, one twin motion file with everything in it. So you can have nice renderings and everything come from that one file with everything merged together. So in theory, we'll see through this video uh, how it ends up working out for you. But uh, what we're going to work on is one twin motion file will be the side and the other one will be the building. And ultimately we're going to just merge one to the other and say, well, maybe that, maybe we end up making the third twin motion file, maybe not necessarily, but we'll at least have two to where the site's completely separate until we bring it in, which is great. And we can also look at ultimately bringing it back in, merging it back in, making some tests, uh, changing some things in the site file, merging that back in, see what happens. So, all right, let's get into it now. So what we have here is just Revit file. And what I've broken out is just the site. You can see where this giant building will ultimately go here. I've added some material. So it looks a little bit, a little done, but uh, we want to go back to Revit. And once we go back to Revit, we can see what we're working with. So yes, here it is. It is just the site. This a very large site, kind of ridiculously large, but there's where my building ultimately goes. And what I've done is I've just temporarily hidden or temporarily isolated my site here. And I've done that, of course, for the purposes of getting this file completely separate. And you can see there it is. There's the Revit file synced in via direct link. So <laughs> I will point this out because I've because I've broken this out and I have just the site here. Um, the second I end up changing this, let's say I open up my building file and then I look at my building. If I then happen to open up my site file, it's going to automatically resync the model. Unfortunately, it's not going to go based off of whenever I go to Datasmith here and then actually synchronize, which I wish it did. But for some reason, when it opens it up, if I have that Revit file still associated and linked, of course I do, it's going to resync. And what typically happens is that I don't have the view in Revit set up to be perfectly like this still, where just the site is isolated. So the unfortunate part of this workflow is that I'm going to end up deleting this link. And so what does that do really? Well, that means that my site is completely isolated from my Revit model and just know that it is there. And if I need to, let's say, if I end up updating my site in Revit, I have to update this file too. Not a huge deal, mainly because it's the site. There are certain things that are gonna update a lot more like the building, which is where I do wanna keep that fully synced up all the time. And so I am going to save this, save this twin motion file, and we can make sure that we have this broken out and all good to go. Okay. So I, then I'm going to open this recent file, which is the building. And this one, of course, you're going to see as soon as I open this up, it's going to sync it <laughs> and you'll realize why you don't want to do what I just described. Uh, because whenever this does open, it's going to sync back to my model. And currently my model is looking at this site and that's not necessarily what I want yet. Yeah, don't care about this. There we go. So we have the building now, which is fantastic. Uh, this is totally what I want. If I were to sync or relink or anything like that, then that's when I would get into trouble. So 
here we go. You can see there's my building there and it's broken out just like that. So cool. This is great. And you can see that there's a lot of missing site and that's because I have it all in a completely separate Revit file. That's exactly what I want. So I want to keep this link here because if I do make changes to my building, like I said, I'm more likely to do that. Then I want to be able to see those changes here and update them, but just know that whenever I do hit sync, if I happen to see the site here, it's going to pull the site in to this link in this twin motion file as well, which I don't want to see. So just make sure that you're hiding this site while you're bringing this and syncing this view back in so they can stay separate. And we can see that we have everything separate here because it is, it's just my model. I don't have landscape or anything else here, which is great. So how do we back to the merge? Finally, how do we do this? Well, literally go here, we can go to the burger menu here or anywhere and then merge. And so here, here's what we're working with. We could say our file, basically what file do we want to merge into? Um, of course, I'm going to go and find my new file, which is going to be right here. Here's my merge. I've got my building and my site file. So these two files are both going to work together. Um, I want to bring in my actual site. And so here's, a, it's real basic. There's very little I can cover here. It is landscape. Do I want to bring in the landscape? And so just know, I know we're bringing in landscape, but also know that none of the landscape I'm bringing in is twin motion landscape. So this uh, under all of my knowledge is only referring to twin motion landscape. So like if you put in trees and grass and a bunch of other junk that is all twin motion, that's what this checkbox is. This has nothing to do with the fact that it happens to be landscape from a Revit file. So I don't care about that. And obviously this will be a great test to see whether this comes in or not. So I'm going to uncheck landscape and do I want to save a copy? Well, in theory I do, but uh, I don't, but I guess for the sake of this, let's go ahead and save a copy. So I'll press okay. And so it's like, okay, where do you want to save this? Well, um, go ahead and save. Let's just call this site copy because that's really what this is. I will press save and then here we go. And so we're going to get this merge in. So I've, I've heard mixed things about where, yeah, and all this issue, but look at this. Is this not exactly what we wanted? Let's zoom out and make sure. Um, I know where the water goes and the water looks perfect. And so we can get this outer looking view. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, let's go back to Revit and see what we see. Look at this. There's my water. This is looking really good. So I have heard of some people having issues about things not coming in to the same place, like not working together like this. And my first response is obviously if what I were to have done, if I had taken my entire building, for example, which is this, and let's say I had rotated it or moved it at that point, if I were to then merge, it's going to bring things in, things in like bring the landscape in to look like this basically where it is in association to where it was synced from in Revit. So assuming you don't move anything, that's my guess. If, if things start moving on you when you merge, my guess is that they are moved because you move them into motion. That is just a guess. So uh, what is my actual uh, recommendation? It is to not move anything. Uh, do all your moving in Revit to where it's literally just one-to-one -one in here and you're good to go. So what are we working with now? Well, <laughs> We unfortunately have these uh, two scene graph, like actual folders. So something we could do as far as like folder and file management is to completely get rid of those. So I can move this up. I can get rid of these. I don't need these at all. And then we can see this is all here. This is totally perfect. Now, of course, this is not telling me which is which because they're all from the same Revit file. So maybe if I had renamed them and been smart enough to have done that, uh, that might have been a, a better way to understand that this is the building and that this is the site because, because that's what it is. So with that, that's really cool. Um, what does this mean again? This means that I can have someone working it on the site and whenever I'm ready, because I'm just constantly working on the building from Revit and all this, uh, whenever the site's done, then ta-da, I can pull it right in. But the nice thing is also I can pull it in just like I did, but then someone else can keep working on the, the actual site twin motion file. And because it's so easy in the organization, I can just simply hide this and bring it in again, or I can literally delete this and then bring it in again. So I, I constantly have the updates, which is fantastic. So is this um, like the solution to, to design options? Is this to the solution to 
complete collaboration within Twinmotion? No, it's not, uh, because obviously there are plenty of drawbacks in that you still can only have one person working in a Twinmotion file. Obviously, this means that you can split it up as many ways as you want to or need to, which is awesome. I can even see this taken to the point where um, it's almost you take it a step further for like interiors. If you have, if you're an architect, like I am, I'm working on the architecture, the exterior, more of the building structure, things like that. And we have a team of interior designers that we work with, whether they're in our office or not, but assuming they are, this would work a lot better. We could have a completely separate twin motion file. That is maybe it's just the interior floors and then they can put in the furniture or they, or it's just the walls of the interior walls. Like there's a number of ways you can break this out and have this organized across multiple twin motion files to where you can import every little thing that you want to. So obviously there's potentially a lot of work that goes into that, but it, it, it could be nice to compartmentalize each one of the different portions of a building that someone could work on in twin motion, and then ultimately everything can come together in one twin motion file like this. So the, you know, this could, this could totally work, but, um, what I might do and what I might have done is instead of using two files, like I did here, if I go to import, I can see, um, let's go ahead and say, we're going to import just to show you the files. Looking at the files here, I might organize it a different way. If I were doing, like I just mentioned, having one big merge file, I might do one that's the site. I might do one that's the building. I might have one that's specifically interiors or specifically furniture or you name it. You break it out however you want. But then I might have a final Twinmotion file that is literally just all of them merged together. So there's there's literally like compartment of twin motion files and then finally one master twin motion file. And of course you can have that, you can have that linked from Revit, but then here's the great part too, is let's say you get to the point where, okay, you're handing this off to someone else. And all you do is say, Hey, look, here is, here are all my files. And I'm, all you need to do is merge them all together and then save as a new merged file. And then at that point they can do their uh, separate job of, visualization, making it pretty, you know, getting, setting up all the views and exports for twin motion. So you have someone dedicated to that side of it. So basically saying that at that point, it's not tied to your Revit file, but we could do it the other way to where you just have the site file. You have all these other files within the main building is always linked to Revit and is always linked. And so whenever you're ready at that point, those just become all the other compartment twin motion files become merged into that main building file, which is always linked to Revit. So there's a ton of ways to do this. And of course, there's always a file save as you can file save, save as anything, get a completely separate twin motion file, and then hand that out to someone else to work on separately, but you're disconnected. So the, the main idea is how do you keep all of these connected uh, from a, from the model? Like how do you keep them connected to the model physically while being able to work on multiple pieces of the visualization at once. Well, that's totally how you do it. So ultimately my hope is, and I think we can, we can see this at some point in the future. Maybe it's another year or two. I have no idea, but given that with unreal engine five, there is complete collaborative support where you can have multiple people in the same old unreal engine file. I can imagine because twin motion is basically like the baby brother of unreal engine. Let's be honest. Then I can start seeing that feature come into twin motion, hopefully in the more near future than not, uh, because that would be immensely valuable. That and better managing design options are the two biggest things that twin motion can really improve upon. And if that, if those two things happen, or even just one of those, I will be immensely happy because there'll be so many more things that we can do, but we do need uh, a way of collaborating. And I think merging is a great way in the meantime, to be able to make this happen because we can split things up as we need to appropriately to the point where we have split it out. However you want to set up your workflow based on the number of people you have dedicated to the project and what they can do into emotion and all this. So th there's a lot that can be done as far as merging ultimately, because that's what it is. And the nice thing is that you can choose to bring in that landscape or not. So obviously again, because I had no landscape within that merge, there was nothing to bring in specifically. Uh, it was just all the, the Revit landscape and all the Revit site files and floors and everything that I knew was a part of what I called the site and what I called the landscape. So, uh, break that up however you want. I think this is a great tool in the meantime to 
uh, get something closer to a collaborative twin motion experience because you can ultimately put it all together. So that will do it for this video. We looked at how the merge tool works, very simple, and then really more of the capabilities and ideas of how these workflows can work for you. So let me know how you're using the merge tool, how you have in the past and how this video might have changed your outlook on it and what you might be doing in the future. That'd be great to know. So if at any point in this video, you happen to learn something, which I hope you did, then please them also like button it really helps me out a lot. Also consider subscribing. That does too. I know a lot of you have not done that. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below about anything merge or anything twin motion, because it's good stuff. I want to know how you use it. So that will do it again. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.